Good morning. What do you think of when you hear the word gamma? My name is Emily Craven. I'm the manager of sterilization science at Nordian. And today I'm going to ask you to look at gamma processing in a way that's different from how you may have in the past. The title of this presentation is Explore Gamma, Bridging the Gap Between Medical Device Manufacturers and Gamma Sterilization. What I'd like to do this morning is to help you look at gamma sterilization as part of the complete process of taking a medical device from design to patient. If you're new to gamma, or even if you're not, you might be wondering who Nordian is. We are a technology and solutions provider to irradiation facilities and companies considering the use of gamma technology. We are not a contract service provider. We don't have a contract irradiation service, although we do have a small demonstration and teaching facility based out of Montreal, Canada. Our customers are the companies that you may already deal with for your sterilization services, such as Steris, Sterogenics, and Synergy. We also have customers who are large medical device manufacturers who have chosen to sterilize with Gamma in-house. Medical device manufacturers have a choice when it comes to deciding on a sterilization process. What are some of the key considerations in the decision making? Reliability. Do you have a technology that you can trust and depend on? Efficacy. Do you have a process that you're sure is going to produce a sterile product? Compatibility. Will your product's functionality be maintained after the sterilization process? Availability. Can you get the technology that you need? Cost. Is it affordable? Comfort. Ultimately, it comes down to what you feel confident with based on your knowledge and experience balanced against acceptable risk. These are all pieces of a larger picture of a safe product for patients. Let's explore gamma as a sterilization technology. To understand reliability, we first need to understand how a gamma irradiator works. The process begins with cartons or boxes of medical devices in their final sterile barrier system. The boxes are loaded into totes or carriers that are conveyed into a shielded room where they're exposed to a source of radiation. In this case, a rack filled with cobalt-60 pencils. Radiation penetrates the boxes. The amount of radiation is measured in dose, and the magnitude and distribution of dose in the product depends on the design of the irradiator, the amount of cobalt in the rack, and the time of exposure, so the time the product spends in the irradiation chamber. This is a very simple process. There's a product handling system. There's a source mechanism. The only control parameter is the amount of time required to achieve the dose specified. Gamma radiation is extremely predictable, easy to characterize, and robust. There are irradiation systems in service today that have been in operation for decades. We have certain units that have been in service for over 40 years. If you've been to visit a contract irradiation facility, or even if you're familiar with some in-house designs, you likely have an image of a large-scale machine processing enormous volumes of product. One of the innovative ways that we're looking at gamma sterilization is to design for scalability so that smaller volume processors can bring gamma in-house with room for growth. Take this gamma fit irradiator design, for example. This is a two-pass conventional tote machine, but by taking future growth into consideration, it can easily be upgraded into a four-pass system with increased tote size for both increased throughput and efficiency. Consider also a small-scale facility where growth isn't anticipated. By reducing the shield size to what's required and designing a unit specifically tailored to the processing requirements of a specific medical device manufacturer or distributor, Gamma in-house can be accessible to anyone. We've talked about the reliability of Gamma systems. Now let's take a look at efficacy or how it's effective at producing a sterile product. Radiation sterilized works by disrupting the DNA of microorganisms present on medical devices. The DNA is damaged, which results in the death of the bug or rendering it non-viable, which means that it can't reproduce anymore. There are various dose setting techniques used to establish the relationship between dose to the given product and the bioburden resistance. This will depend on the number and kinds of microorganisms present, which could be a factor of the manufacturing process and the raw materials used. The sterility assurance level is the probability of a viable microorganism surviving the sterilization process. For most medical devices that come into contact with compromised human tissue, this is one in a million. Dose setting is used to determine the minimum dose required to achieve the desired sterility assurance level. In all irradiation systems, there will be a range of doses delivered to the product. 
the range is measured by mapping out the dose throughout this product stacked inside the irradiation container. The energy from the radiation is attenuated, which means that um, most gamma sterilization processes are, are two-sided. Um, so the maximum dose will always be found on the planes that face the source, and the minimum will always be found on the plane that's at the geometric center of the product stack. In dose mapping, an array of dosimeters are placed on each of these planes in order to determine both what the maximum and minimum doses are and where they're located. This graph shows a typical set of dose mapping results. In this case, the minimum and maximum dose from each of several vertical levels in the product stack are plotted on a relative scale. The minimum dose is set to one, and you can see that the maximum dose here is about 1.35 times the minimum. Dose mapping is used to ensure that at least the minimum dose is achieved throughout the entire product stack. So the dose mapping results are correlated to the radiation conditions that meet this minimum requirement. Radiation processing, dose delivery, dose setting, and dosimetry measurements are well understood, and there are several standards and guidance documents available through ANSI, AMI, ISO, and ASTM, including the 11137 series of standards, sterilization of healthcare products, radiation, on development, validation, and routine control of a sterilization process in part one, and on dose setting in part two. ASTM Committee E61 has a series of standards, practices, and guidance documents available on dosimetry system selection, calibration, dose mapping, and, gamma, and use in gamma facilities. Both AMI and ASTM offer training courses um, and workshops which are intended to help users understand and apply their standards. AMI offers training courses on a fairly regular basis which cover dose setting um, and validation. ASTM has a very popular workshop on dosimetry for radiation processing which is held every second year. The next one will take place in Oxford, England in the summer of 2014. Information on both standards and training are available on both the AMI and the ASTM websites. We've talked about the radiation effect on the microorganisms. How does the radiation affect the device itself? Most single-use medical devices are made from polymetric materials. When long polymer chains are radiated, three different effects can take place. Chain scission, where the chains break, cross-linking, where the chains connect to each other, and recombination, where they cha the chains can break and then recombine. In some cases, these changes can have a beneficial effect. For example, cross-linking can make materials stiffer or more flexible and result in better mechanical properties. In some cases, though, the radiation can lead to um, embrittlement, discoloration, or deterioration. The effect will be dependent on both the polymer and the dose. When designing with sterilization in mind, consider looking at radiation compatible compatibility of the polymer as part of the design process. This table shows the polymers that are most commonly used in medical devices and also which polymers are preferred from the standpoint of radiation resistance. Note that the most commonly used polypropylene when radiation stabilized is considered gamma stable. And in fact, almost all of the commonly used polymers can be found in the radiation resistant column. Some materials such as PTFE have poorer radiation resistance but can still be gamma sterilized depending on the dose and application. You need to look at whether or not the degradation affects the performance in the intended use. And I know that Teflon is irradiated today. A useful resource for information on material compatibility is the AMI Technical Information Report 17 on the compatibility of materials subject to sterilization, which covers all modalities. When considering compatibility, you may also want to consider the polymers that are in the packaging materials and the integrity of the sterile barrier after irradiation. Again, many of these materials fall into the category of the radiation-resistant polyethylenes. With gamma, some of the things that you don't have to worry about when it comes to compatibility include tight interferences, such as the junction that happens between metal and plastic pieces in some orthopedic devices, which can cause issues if you're using a gas-based sterilization technique which has to uh, get between those, uh, that interface. Package permeability, that might be a requirement for gas or moist heat processes. Temperature sensitivity, while there is a temperature increase with gamma processing, usually maximum values are around 40 degrees Celsius, and even these moderate temperatures can be um, compensated for by pre-cooling or actively cooling devices during irradiation. Mixed densities, which can sometimes challenge electron beam sterilization processes, are more easily handled by gamma, which has a much higher penetration depth of the radiation. 
And finally, gamma radiation leaves no residuals, meaning that the product is safe to use immediately after sterilization, and there are no harmful residues left in any quantity on the surface. Sometimes compatibility is an issue because the maximum dose delivered could exceed what is acceptable to the product. We can look at innovative approaches to setting up a gamma process to address issues caused by higher doses. In fact, there was a presentation on this here yesterday by Marta Winters of Nelson Labs. There are published standards on validating lower doses through AMI and through other peer-reviewed publications. In some, if not all cases, setting lower doses may also require process changes to reduce your upfront bio burden, which can mean using clean room techniques or cleaner raw materials. For some particularly sensitive medical devices, perhaps combination devices or devices with very specialized materials, a sterility assurance level of one in a million can't be achieved by any sterilization method without damaging the product. In this case, there's also guidance available on choosing an alternate sterility assurance level, um, such as uh, one in 100,000 or one in 10,000, which can significantly reduce the dose required while still allowing a product to be labeled sterile. If the product can withstand the minimum dose but not the maximum dose that it receives in a particular irradiator, you can look at changes to the physical presentation of the product to reduce the amount of overdose. For example, using a thinner stack of products brings those, those planes together and also brings the maximum and minimum doses together as well. It has also been demonstrated that irradiation in a modified environment, such as reduced temperature or oxygen-free environments, can also mitigate damaging effects of higher doses. These are just a few examples of lower dose and process changes um, that can be used to improve the compatibility of gamma when it is an issue. In order to implement changes such as these, you need to have control over your process to allow for flexibility required in specialized dose delivery. You either need to have a contractor who is willing to accommodate your requirements, or with an in-house system, you can have complete control over the process. At the beginning of the presentation, we talked about six different factors to consider when setting up a sterilization process. We started with the reliability of gamma systems, followed by the effectiveness of radiation on microbial reduction, and then compatibility. The next factor I want to look at is availability. Gamma irradiators are located throughout the developed world and already have a strong presence in emerging markets in Asia and South America. So far, there are approximately 170 irradiators installed in 50 different countries worldwide. In addition to what is nearby, you also might want to look at what you have in-house. Many companies have chosen to bring sterilization in-house, commonly steam and moist heat sterilization, ethylene oxide is also often used in-house, and to a lesser extent, electron beam and gamma irradiation. If you have an on-site sterilization capability already, chances are you're going to design your product around that technology. So if gamma is not nearby, consider bringing it in-house. This is already the choice of many medical device manufacturers due to both the economy of the process and the control that it gives them. As we mentioned before, gamma operation and validation is straightforward. A new innovative trend that we're seeing is companies using a non-conventional justification to bring gamma sterilization in-house. Their traditional model is of a large-scale manufacturing facility that produces enough volume of material to essentially justify a contractor radiator on their site. But more and more, we're seeing companies with smaller volumes but higher value products. In this case, the main driver might not be economic, although with the scalability of modern irradiator systems, smaller scale systems can still be affordable. Instead, the main driver is quality control over the process. Take, for example, a highly specialized device that may require special environmental conditions during irradiation and or very precise dose delivery. By bringing the irradiation in-house, the manufacturer now has the ability to control and monitor the entire process. Contractors may be able to accommodate special requirements, absolutely, but often they come at a cost, meaning that you could pay more money and get less dose. Speaking of money, ultimately, cost does matter. All other considerations aside, gamma is an affordable technology, which it is why it is so widely used today. But it's important to look at the total cost of a sterilization process. This, looks, this includes such things as validation, including time and materials, products used in dose setting, destructive testing, and ongoing process monitoring. Errors. How much does it cost when something goes wrong, either a processing error or machinery fault? How expensive is a recall? Turnaround time. How much does it cost you to have an inventory of product waiting to be sterilized or released? What is the cost of quality? 
What expertise do you need to have and how complicated are your quality systems? Transportation and distribution. Are you paying to ship to a contract facility and then back to your own site, or is it just another step along the way to the customer? The location of the contract facility can be key to whether or not there are incremental costs involved. Consider also transportation when there are special requirements such as refrigeration, as there may be in the case of some biologics or pharmaceutical products. And finally, investment and payback. Have you already invested in another technology? What's the payback for investing in gamma, whether it's investment in, in revalidating at a contract site or making the investment to bring gamma in-house? Companies now demand a payback period of five years or less, and we've been able to demonstrate that this can be feasible in gamma systems. Comfort can be your greatest ally or your worst enemy. Comfort is the feeling of well-being for a process that works well, but it's also the biggest barrier to change, even when there are compelling reasons to do so. Comfort can be about what you know and what you already do. If you have multiple products, you may choose to use a common sterilization modality, even if it's not optimal for each one. If you've already made an investment in a given technology, you're less likely to want to change so that you can make your money back. Again, comfort is in using what's available. There's less perceived risk in, sh in transporting your valuable product to the contractor who's down the street than there is in either shipping it farther away or choosing to make an investment in-house. Does your company's reputation depend on the safety of your products? There should also be comfort in a process that works. Comfort in reliability, efficacy, and compatibility. Knowing that your product is gonna be safe and effective. There's comfort in making a good fiscal decision in terms of what you can afford, whether it be processing costs or an upfront investment with payback. All decisions that we make may be reasoned with facts and information, but fundamentally, our choices are emotional and you'll be compelled by the course, which ultimately gives you the greatest peace of mind. Your choices matter. Remember the key considerations that we started out with. Reliability, efficacy, compatibility, cost, and comfort. When you choose a gamma process, design your product with sterilization in mind. Validate your sterilization process using well understood industry standards. Plan out and leverage the simplicity of your day-to-day -day operation. Justify your process financially. Implement your process either in-house or at a contract facility. And if all the pieces fit together, you should end up with peace of mind. Think about Gamma as part of the bigger picture of, of a safe product for patients. You can explore more about Nordian and continue to explore Gamma at our website or follow us on Twitter. If you would like to continue the conversation about Gamma, please feel free to contact myself or any of my colleagues at the Gamma Center of Excellence. Our mandate is to help our customers' business grow through education, collaboration, and promotion of Gamma technology and applications. We've also, we've also left some information on the seats. There are some brochures on the front um, chair for some of the education of the, uh, opportunities that are currently available. Thank you very much for your time today.